Katie. I'm the director of children at MPC, and I'm so excited to be sharing with you. I'm so glad that you're with us, tuning in wherever you are. Welcome. I'm gonna explain where we are in just a few minutes, so hang tight and we'll, you'll learn more. This week, we are celebrating mothers. And moms all over, we want you to know we love you, we see you, we value you, and we are for you. Mothers really show us so much about God's love, don't they? I mean, you have this baby and there's this immediate bond. You love this baby even though they haven't done anything to earn that love, right? I mean, why else would a mom carry a baby for nine months? Why would we go through painful childbirth? Why would we feed around the clock, live sleep deprived and wipe bottoms and lose any kind of me feeling? That is because of this undeniable feeling of love. And we know that we love because God first loved us. Mothers can teach us so much about God's love for us. We also recognize that this day can be really complicated for many. And I'm so sorry. I want you to know that the Lord promises that he is near to the brokenhearted. So today we're actually starting a new series about it's complicated because we know we recognize there are complicated relationships all over the place because we live in a broken world, don't we? Uh, in the next few minutes, I hope that you'll see that Jesus didn't step away from the complicated. He actually stepped into the complicated. He calls us to do the same. So the scripture that we're going to look at today is from 1 Corinthians 13. And it's not the, uh, the love verse that you've heard at probably every wedding. Love is patient. Love is kind. does not envy. does not boast. You might have heard that even if you've never cracked open a Bible before. But these verses that we're looking at today come right before those epic famous verses. And Paul is imploring us to rethink what we do and why we do it. So check this out right here, 1 Corinthians 13, 4. If I speak in tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prop prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but I do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but I do not have love, I gain nothing. That's really powerful scripture, isn't it? And it's pretty convicting. What we do doesn't matter if we don't love first. And that's how we're going to step into these complicated relationships. I actually have an example of that from my own life in the complications of being a mother. Uh, this summer, I have um, a three-year-old daughter, Cadence. And this summer, we were deciding it's a great time. We're in lockdown. We should really potty train her, right? And I was eight months pregnant. It was hot. She was a little old to be potty trained. And we decided, okay, we're going to try everything. We're going to read all the articles about potty training. And... The girl did not want to use the potty, okay? She did, she refused. We tried rewards, stickers, M&Ms, books, a doll that peed. We tried everything. We even said, listen, girl, if you don't use the potty, you're gonna be really ashamed later on. You can't be in diapers at 14, right? I mean, we tried everything and nothing worked. We exhausted all of our options. Do you wanna know what actually worked? What finally worked, what worked was me sitting on the ground with her for hours and hours. That's right, I had to sit with her and she felt loved and she felt safe. And only then was progress made. I had to sit with her in that mess, <laughs> right? So that's what I hope that you'll gain from the next few minutes that we spend together. I want you to realize Jesus calls us to sit with the complicated in the messes and lead with love. So sometimes we see a complicated situation and we might think, okay, I want to fix it. Or maybe we say, I want to run away from it. But we're missing that first step. We have to love first. So taking a step in love can look like a lot of different things. 
maybe you're a parent of a teen and your teen girl wants to date this guy that you're not a huge fan of and you know it's just going to end in heartbreak. So instead of saying, hey, actually, no, no, this guy is bad. He's going to break your heart. No, say, hey, this is how I feel. Leading with love is this. I'll be with you in that heartbreak, right? Or maybe a family member has an addiction. And instead of saying, this addiction is ruining your life, end it now. It's, I'll sit with you and be with you even if you slip up. Or maybe it's a new believer. Instead of saying, you need Jesus, you sit there and you say, hey, I'm here to hear out all of your questions and your doubts. I'm with you. Or maybe it's a parent who can't take care of their child. And instead of saying, you screwed up, you're saying, I'll step in. That's what stepping in with love looks like in the most complicated situations. The bottom line is this, when you first step in love towards the problems we face as society, God will break society's most complicated situations. If we don't step out in love, we will gain nothing and this damaging cycle continues, right? So imagine what this can look like if we love the person in front of us, if we love beyond our circle, and if we love even when it hurts us. When you lead in love, you gain trust. When you gain trust, you mend relationships. When you mend relationships, you end addictions. When you end addictions, you keep families together. When you keep families together, you break cycles. That's the power of stepping in love in the most complicated. Do you know something really complicated? There are over 30,000 children in foster care in Los Angeles County alone. And their life, the foster system, foster system is just an uh, experience of what happened in a complicated relationship, right? It just exemplifies what's happened because of complications. You know, you may be wondering where we are today, right now. We are at a really special place called James Storehouse. And this place serves thousands of children and families in foster care all over Ventura County and the LA County area. They equip and they inspire people and they help break cycles. The, the name James Storehouse actually comes from the scripture in James, religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans in their distress. So friends, James Storehouse steps into the complicated and they let love lead here foster parents are equipped with items with no cost here babies are given homemade blankets and new cribs here kids who have never gotten a birthday a birthday present get to have an extravagant birthday party here a pregnant mom who feels scared to go to school or scared to go home gets to have a baby shower thrown just for them here, a teenager who's aging out of the system gets gifted a car so they can actually keep a job. Here, teenagers that find themselves as parents are equipped with loving adults who train them in parenting skills. That is what love looks like. Here, love is felt and cycles are broken. This is what it looks like when you step into the complicated and you lead with love. I want you to think now for a minute, what's one way you can step into the complicated? Maybe it's here with the orphan crisis, or maybe it's someone that's just right in front of you. I want you to think about, who can I sit with? Who can I serve? Who can I mentor? How can I give? And how will I pray? In just a few minutes, I'm going to show you different areas of this beautiful place. You'll see a room for babies where a foster parent can come in overwhelmed and have clothes that have been donated and are in great shape for their babies. You'll see another room with teenage clothes. You'll see preteen clothes. You'll see gifts and toys. All these things that just show, hey, we're here for you and we love you. You can do this. You're not alone. This is complicated, but God is with you. 
So you're gonna take a few minutes to see all the different spaces around here. I want you to take some time, you'll hear some music, to pray with me for the kids in foster care that get blessed by this place. And I also want you to think about who you can serve, how you can step in into this complicated situation. So let's take a few minutes to do that now. But he brought me and knew his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free. Oh, it's free and I'm a child of God. Yes, I Thank you so much for taking time to see this space and to pray over all of these situations. And we, we believe that we are better together. And so let's pray and unite in the name of Jesus right now for these children all over this community. If you wanna learn more about James Storehouse, go to jamesstorehouse.org and you'll see all the ways that they serve children in this community. Let's pray now. Father, we love you. We thank you that you loved us first. And you know all the complicated situations that we're in right now. We know that you are near to our burdens and we trust you with those. And when we think of this, this burden, this complicated situation, that is that we have 30,000 kids here in LA in the foster system, God, we ask for your clarity on what to do next. What do you want us to do, God? And we want to say we're sorry. We're sorry from running from the problem. We're sorry for being overwhelmed because it seems so big. Would you just give us a next step? Would you just show us how to love and what to do if that's volunteering, if that's giving, if that's praying, if that's opening a home? Would you make that so clear to us? Because we know this is close to your heart and we want to be close to your heart, Jesus.
We know you'll be victorious in this, and we ask you to use us to go out and to serve your children that you adore. We don't want to run from this problem. We want to step into this complicated situation, just like you tell us, and we're going to do that out of love. If we don't have love, we have nothing. So God, we're doing this out of love for you, our Savior. We love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen.